Lastly, uh, we want to conclude our discussion of the neuron by talking more about synapses, how synapses work, uh, how we compute the effect of synapses in our models, and then end up with also a, a kind of full picture of how the ions actually work in the neuron. So here's a, a diagram of the synapse. You have here on the bottom the presynaptic or sending neuron. Uh, this is an axon, and it has this thing called a terminal bouton. You might think that's a button, but it's a bouton. It's French. And uh, it has neurotransmitter in these little vesicles, which is released through the uh, partially in, in response to calcium. Uh, which is activated by the uh, action potential as it comes up into this uh, terminal bouton. Um, and that leads to the fusing of the membranes uh, of the vesicles against the kind of extracellular membrane here, the bouton. And that causes the neurotransmitter to basically be released out into the synaptic cleft. The cleft is actually tiny. It's really microscopic. Uh, our diagrams always make it look a lot bigger, but it really is very, very tiny. So really just a very short distance across, there are these uh, receptors aligned with the release sites on the presynaptic cell. Um, and those are what drive influx of excitation into the receiving or postsynaptic neuron. So this is a spine, which is, again, a little protuberance. It's not a bouton. It is a spine. Um, and it has uh, important properties that if you go into details about how neurons work, it's important that this spine kind of separates the, the uh, postsynaptic uh, receiving side from the rest of the dendrite. But that's more detail than we need to know. Um, so the the primary action is that the neurotransmitter, in this case we're thinking about excitatory neurotransmitter, which is called glutamate, um, and that goes again across the, the cleft, binds to these receptors called AMPA receptors. Don't ask me what AMPA stands for. Um, it uh, causes these receptors to twist, and this is very well understood now uh, exactly the kind of protein structure of these AMPA receptors. There's different variants of them, but they all have the same kind of characteristic that, that when the neurotransmitter binds to them, they twist open um, and then they can kind of twist back closed. And when they twist open, they allow sodium ions, preferentially but not exclusively, to enter the postsynaptic cell. Uh, and then when those sodium ions come in, they are positively charged and very intuitively, if you have positive charges coming into the cell, that leads to a overall excitation of the postsynaptic cell. So the GE that we've been talking about in our equations is literally the amount of sodium that comes rushing into the cell uh, when these AMPA channels open up in response to the release of neurotransmitter. There are other receptors, known as NMDA receptors in particular, that we'll talk about in the learning chapter that allow calcium ions to come in. And these do not play a major role in kind of the signaling pathways for uh, activating and exciting the postsynaptic cell, although, although they do in some cases, but it's a more minor role. Um, but they play a really critical role in learning. So we'll talk about that in the learning chapter. Also, the m -gluars, uh metabotropic glutamate receptors, also play a, an important role in learning, as do the voltage-gated calcium channels.